Chapter 8 Rue crouched down quickly. There was no way the man could have seen him. Again, the fear of magic washed over him. The street thief part of him wanted to run, to flee this man and this cursed part of town, to disappear back into his hidden home. There his day could begin as yesterday's had, and as tomorrow's would. That would be the smart thing to do. But why start now? Those dolls pulled at him. The tiny warriors that battled on the tabletop. This was his chance to take a closer look. He wouldn't get too near or stay too long. Rue stood and slowly entered the tavern. The air felt different here, no longer carrying the sickly taint of the cursed streets. Here it felt like a light breeze, invigorating and refreshing. He stood at the edge of the lantern's light, reluctant to take the last step into a strange world. The bear man sat opposite him. He seemed even bigger now. His brooding form filled the room. He gestured to the chair by Rue. Sit. Rue's eyes narrowed. It must be a trap. He had already risked too much lingering in this cursed town, standing in a room that glowed with magic. He found himself frozen, unwilling to take a step forwards or backwards. The silence hung between them as Rue held the warrior's gaze. He stood like an alley cat, offered food, ready to flee but tempted to stay. Finally the warrior shrugged. Go then, I have much to think on. Rue glanced at the open door and then at the table. It stretched out as a comforting barrier between them. Even with the imposing man looming in front of him, a great sword sitting within reach, Rue was drawn to the board in front of him. It still lay dark, the orbs of light gone. He slid slowly into the chair, angling it for a quick escape. The board was made up of twelve stone blocks laid out four by three. Six plain wooden tiles rested on it. Rue was sure they had been floating during the game. He was also sure there had been balls of light sitting on them. The bear man had been watching Rue watch the board. It needs to be reset after a match, he said. Take up the six tiles, then recast them. Rue eyed the tiles suspiciously. Then they will light up again? Perhaps. Rue glanced up at the warrior. Cord shrugged. It does not work for everyone. Why not? Well, most are no-cos. Rue raised his eyebrows. Cord waved his hand dismissively. No-cos. People who can't do magic. Rue nodded slowly, then suddenly snatched his hand back. What do you mean? The board tells us many things, lad. Cast the tiles and I'll tell you what it says. Rue raised an eyebrow and looked at the tiles again. I don't want to touch that poison. Cord shrugged again. Probably for the best. A life of magic is not for everyone. He half rose, reaching to gather the board. Wait, Rue whispered. The big man paused, then sat back into his chair. Rue bit his lip as he considered the board and the tiles. He was a small boy in a small world. This was big. Too big for any life he had imagined. He looked over his shoulder at the open door. The world outside seemed to shrink even more. Rue grimaced. He had to know. He snatched up the tiles and then cast them quickly across the board. They fell still. Stayed still, looking small and ordinary. Rue blew out a sigh. Whether from relief or disappointment, he wasn't sure. Then the six tiles shuddered and floated above the board. Reds, blues and greens lit up the room as orbs of colour formed over the tiles. They crackled softly with energy. Rue looked up at the warrior. The big man looked slightly impressed. What does it mean? That I can do magic? asked Rue. Potentially, maybe. With training. The bear man was watching the board. Your co is very strong. Especially the red. Rue was searching the board. My co? Your life energy. 
When you recast the tiles, the border tunes itself with the caster. It flares up with a reading of your co. Like I said, your red. It's very strong. What does that mean? Red is body, blue is mind, green is spirit. Most people living in a city have low green. Yours is quite good. Rue frowned. He didn't understand any of this. That green tile to your left, said the bear man. Slide it forward. Rue glanced up at the man. What will happen? The big man chuckled, but said nothing. Rue grimaced and looked at the board. The green tile floated in the corner tantalizingly close to his hand. He touched it gingerly, trying to avoid the pulsing green orb that hovered over its center. It bobbed slightly in the air, as if floating on water. He flicked it forward, as he had seen the man do earlier. The tile slid across the board, passing over the colored squares, until it hit another floating tile. It settled to rest over a green square. The tile flared brightly, and a wisp of emerald light leapt into the air. Rue sat back in astonishment as the wisp swirled briefly in front of him, as if getting its bearings, and then plunged into the sleeping form of the sackcloth doll. The doll sat up. Rue gasped and leapt back, pulling his hands away from the board in shock. He teetered briefly on his chair, arms flailing to catch his balance, then crashed backwards onto the floor. The doll got to its feet and walked to the edge of the table, regarding Rue curiously with its large button eye. It waved. The bear man chuckled. Rue regarded the doll warily from the floor. What is it? A totem. He's part of the game. All this, it's a game? Sometimes. Rue frowned as he got slowly to his feet. The bear man didn't give straight answers. Rue took a closer look at the doll. What's his name? No idea. I found him this morning. You found him? Aye. Along with the board and the tiles, all very old. They sometimes get left behind. A player finds a better doll, gets better armed. This one's been alone a long time. Probably since the Great Fall. He was under all the original rubble. He was abandoned. Rue settled back into his chair. The boy felt the warrior watching him closely. Aye. The doll sat down warily, gazing up at Rue. He's half asleep. He lost most of his power from the fight. Unlock more green. Green is spirit. Green is life. The big man held up one of his own tiles. In the game, red is strength and attack. Blue is defense. You understand? Rue shook his head numbly. He didn't understand any of this. He focused on the board, trying to concentrate. The other green tile sat in the middle, and a red tile blocked it from being able to slide onto a green square. Rue also saw that he could move the red tile down to unlock a red square. He did this, and then quickly slid the green. Two wisps of light leapt off the board and filled the doll. It leapt to its feet and gave a couple of excited hops. It then looked up at Rue. Rue frowned. You're free. Off you go. The doll gave another leap of joy and scampered off. It hovered at the table's edge for a moment before leaping to the floor with an awkward thud. Quickly it got up, brushed itself off, and ran into the shadows of the tavern. The big man watched it leave. It's bound to the board, lad, and its power will run out in a day. It needs a player to give it life. He watched the boy for a moment. You cannot set them free. Rue shrugged. He was wearing his street tough face, guarded and uncaring. The one-eyed doll returned, triumphantly carrying a spoon. It held it up to Rue proudly. The boy smiled in spite of himself. The doll nodded and set the spoon down. It scampered off again. What's your name, lad? said the big man. The boy regarded the warrior with narrowed eyes, weary again. The big man sighed. I am Cord, and this, he nodded to the soldier doll, is my totem, Ironside. The doll saluted crisply. Rue noticed he didn't even have arms. His spear and his shield floated close to his body, the same way the tiles floated over the board. Rue nodded back. Your totem? He fights for you. 
The warrior nodded. He fights for the game, lad. All wisp weavers have their own totem. I power him through the board. And yes, he fights for me. Then we practice our spell casting on them. It's less painful than casting spells on each other. Wisp weavers? Cord nodded. Yes, those that play the game of wisp. Rue shook his head again. It was too much to take in. I've never heard of it. That's because weaving is forbidden. This is a secret game. Still play today, so we can be ready when we are needed again. Needed for what? The same thing we were needed for last time. Rue frowned. His grasp on history was tenuous at best, made up of idle gossip and rumour. Didn't magic cause what happened last time, he asked. There's a cursed street out there that no one can live in. There's a scar all the way up to Roulon. That wasn't us. Us, said Rue, glancing up at Cord. You were there? I was a student at the school, about your age. I was there when it was destroyed. That was a long time ago. You do not look that old. We live a long time. So you fought against the constructs? No, I was too young, Cord said, his face growing dark. All I did was watch wizards die. An uncomfortable silence grew between them. Thankfully, the one eyed dulled returned, this time dragging a rusted mug behind him. He placed it next to the spoon, and then looked up at Rue. What's he doing? asked the boy. Cord glanced down at the doll. He shook himself from his dark mood. Maybe he's setting the table. They can be quite helpful. He gave a small smile. I think he's trying to impress you. Why? Perhaps he wants you to look after him. Rue felt his heart lurch. Me? he stammered. I can't look after him. Why not? The boy held up his grubby hands, covered in dirty fingerless gloves. He plucked at his ragged clothing. Look at me. Do I look like someone who can look after things? The doll tilted its head as it watched the boy. I'm sorry, I've got enough to worry about, Rue explained. Myself, mainly. The doll sat down, its head bowed sadly. I'll just lose it or break it. They can't be hurt, lad. They're made of stone and steel and... He glanced at the one-eyed doll and gave an apologetic shrug. Sackcloth. You don't only have to fight with them. Some people keep them as companions. Just power them up each day like you already have. I don't need a companion. Then fight other wisp weavers. Good players can make good coin doing it. Rue suddenly looked interested. Really? Yes. Once you know where to look for them, there are players everywhere. Even secret tournaments. Quite a few here in your, actually since the king's law doesn't reach this far anymore. Cord's voice grew grim and he leaned forward. But this is still magic, lad. It's been banished, you understand. Do not get caught, especially being a Udai boy. The game must be your secret. But how do I keep using the board? Does the magic run out? Cord stood and gathered his sword. For a boy who won't even tell me his name, you sure do like questions. He looked down at Rue and then at the one-eyed doll and sighed. It's simple, lad. When six tiles are placed on the board, they light up. Slide a tile and if it rests on its own color, it powers your doll. If it rests on a different color, it doesn't. When all six tiles have been moved, the board resets and then the tiles relight. Different every time. Slide the tiles again to unlock more co. He held out his hand and his soldier doll marched up his arm and sat on his shoulder. Understand? Rue shook his head. The warrior gathered his own tiles into a pouch and put his board into a backpack. Suit yourself, lad. Either take the totem or don't. He can stay here another fifty years. I care not. Rue turned quickly. You're leaving? Aye, lad. There's things I must do. The warrior filled the door frame as he looked back at the young boy. You can stay here for as long as the lantern casts light. It is a ward against the taint of this place. He made to leave, but then hesitated. Take the totem, lad. 
Many threads have converged tonight. It smacks of more than just chance. There is a grand weave at work here. Rue looked down at the doll. It stood quietly, heavy regard in its only eye. He heard the door close behind him. The room felt silent, and only the flickering lantern light interrupted the stillness. Finally, Rue cleared his throat. So, you're an orphan too, I guess. The doll did not move, but Rue noticed a slight tremble. The boy's face softened. He leaned forward and held out his hand. I have a home you can come to if you... The doll leapt swiftly onto Rue's hand and held on tight. He had a strength that surprised the boy. Rue smiled. Well, I guess that's a yes then. He gathered up the board and tiles. They fit snugly into his backpack. He also took the lantern off its hook and left the tavern, closing the door behind him. Rue headed home at a jog, his path now well lit by the lantern. There was little fear, despite running down a cursed street carrying forbidden magic in his backpack. Instead, he shared the joy of being out in the night air with a small doll that sat on his shoulder, who every now and then tugged at his ear and pointed in wonder at the pale crescent moon overhead. The end of chapter 8, and thank you for listening. If you enjoyed that, please leave me a generous tip of one like, and may the Chris King watch over you. Also, for the next chapter, make sure you subscribe and put on that notification button, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.